For as long as we have had voices, human beings have told stories. Once we shared our tales of honor and darkness, conflict and family, expressly through oral tradition. Then came the invention of writing, and later, the printing press, which greatly enhanced our ability to share thoughts and beliefs. In the 1890s, film entered the scene, taking our breath away and forever changing the way that we view entertainment. As books and movies continually change and adapt to the modern era, so does storytelling as a whole. Many people would never believe that a video game can weave a yarn as well as a novel. No doubt there were once people who couldn't accept that markings on a piece of paper can tell a story. Even as video game developers use their products to tell their own stories, so do many of the people playing their games. This art is known as roleplay. Rather than one director or author dictating the actions of each and every character, roleplaying, often abbreviated to RP, is more interactive, allowing each person control of their own handcrafted character. There are many forms of roleplaying. Sometimes it's simply used as a demonstration of human interactions in business or at school. But that's very different from, say, LARP, live action roleplaying, in which players dress up as their character and take on their personality. In the late 1960s, a few nerds created a game using pen, paper, and math to simulate medieval battles. It was called Chainmail. This was the precursor to Dungeons & Dragons, the first tabletop role-playing game of its kind. Dungeons & Dragons, or D&D, has since become wildly popular, spawning thousands of different role-playing games and new ways to tell stories. D&D encouraged people to put themselves in the shoes of their character, to interact with their fellow players as if they were actually in the fantasy world of their imagination. Games like D&D eventually came to the computer, but chat rooms were some of the first online roleplay. Then someone took D&D and made it virtual with MUDs, or multi-user dungeons, in which players can explore massive, graphically simplistic worlds and even encounter other players. Back when these text-based worlds were at the height of their popularity, some MUDs began to distinguish themselves from the rest, preferring to be called MUX, multi-user experience, or MUSH, multi-user shared hallucination. The idea of a shared hallucination, or simulation of a fantasy world, prevailed as computers got better and games like Ultima Online and EverQuest started cropping up. In these much more advanced and visual games, some players preferred to take the hobby a step beyond just killing monsters and exploring the world. Like D&D players before them, they did this by adding a human element to their gaming, coloring their experience with original stories and unique characters of their own. These people are called role players. The MUD became the MMO RPG, or massively multiplayer online role-playing game. MMO indicates that you require an internet connection because you will be taken to a world with many other players in it you can interact with in a variety of ways. In these vast, often beautiful games, players have many customization options, allowing them to create a character unique from everyone else's. 
This immediately adds a creative element to playing such a game, but for the role player, it goes much farther. Here I am playing Lord of the Rings Online, a game which simulates J.R.R. Tolkien's world of Middle-earth. I have created a Hobbit character and given him a Hobbit-like name. As a roleplayer, I will type up the words and actions of my character as I move him around in the world and encounter other players, who are also acting as their characters. We might get along, we might fight, we might decide to go on an adventure together. Anything could happen. It all depends on how we play our characters. In many ways, role-playing is like improvisational theater, a play with no script, just characters and a setting. In this instance, the setting is the Green Dragon Inn, which has a large gathering every Friday night for hobbits to drink, dance, and share their songs and stories. My character is acting in a particular manner based on several things. The world he lives in, in this case Middle Earth, his personality, and his backstory. I made up his personality and backstory and checked my sources to be sure it didn't contradict any of Tolkien's writings. This is an important step in role-playing, and we'll take a look at how to do such a thing in the next part of this guide. Role-playing is a new way to tell stories. It's a creative outlet equally as relevant to humanity as any type of art. Just like a novel or a painting, it's a form of expression and a means through which to communicate ideas, concepts, and dreams. Dr. Wayne D. Blackman used Dungeons and Dragons to help treat a schizophrenic patient who had attempted suicide. In the report he published in 1994, he wrote, This fantasy was used as a safe guide to help the patient learn to acknowledge and express his inner self in a safe and guided way. The patient ultimately matured and developed healthier object relations and a better life. I believe that in the future, RP will be utilized by many more people as a means of stress relief, introspection, and expression. The key to really enjoying and benefiting from roleplay is to remember these words. Roleplay is what you make of it. In this series, we are going to specifically discuss roleplaying in MMORPGs. There are three parts to this guide. Part 1, Join the World in which I will talk about creating a character and integrating with the world of your chosen setting. Part two, seven roleplay sins. Like any gamer community, there are certain taboos in roleplay. I will explain why these sins exist and how to avoid them. Part three, turn the page. Unlike a movie or a novel, a roleplay will go on as long as you want it to. Find out what to do after you've started role-playing and want to take the story further. I've been the Human Floyd. Thanks for watching. Peace.